Well, good afternoon. My name is Mitch Bernstein. I'm a marketing manager for Rockwell Collins, and today we're here to talk about the Proline Fusion System and the King Air. So, what we have here today is our company-owned airplane. It started as a Proline 21 cockpit, and then we retrofitted it with our Proline Fusion touchscreen system. Uh, all the new King Airs now, coming from the factory, have this uh, identical setup. And we can also retrofit this with not only existing Proline 21 King Airs, but also uh, Proline 2 uh, equipped King Air 350s. And we'll be expanding that uh, as the months go on there. So some of the great features about this airplane, the whole philosophy was all about heads up, eyes forward. We want you looking at the airplane as much as you can so you're flying the airplane and not the other way around. Some of the nice features are with the touchscreen. For instance, if we wanted to fly to a KSBM, we could just simply touch one of the approach feathers that's loaded there. And we have the RNAV 13 approach selected. And all we have to do is activate, activate it. And there we go. And now it's loaded in the flight plan. The FMS that's actually included in this system has already calculated uh, the fuel and the time to go there and everything's set. One of the things we do with the FMS is that we actually put it in front of you. So what we can do here, click on a button, we can go ahead and have our FMS dis display up here. Anything you can do with the airplane on the touch screen, you can do with the buttons down here with the cursor control panels and the MKP panel. You can fly the whole airplane with these buttons, with these screens, or a hybrid of both. And it's really customized to how the, the pilot wants to interact with the airplane that fits them best. So for instance, I can go ahead and make this a full screen just by touching the screens there. I've been really trying to keep it very intuitive so people are used to interacting with it the same way they are their smartphones or other type of uh, touchscreen devices. So for instance, if you wanted to slide around to slew, you can drag just like you could on your on your tablet there. And of course we make it very easy to go ahead and just center it back to where you are. A lot of people, <clears throat> we talked about loading up the approach here. Now that the FMS is loaded, we have our charts loaded here as well. So if I want my Jepson charts to display in front of me, I can simply split this screen and notice it's already picked the destination charge there. We didn't have to go through a separate menu because we already told the airplane by touching it that's where we want to go. And it's already got the pre-selected RNAV approach ready to go. Another thing we've done here is we've actually split the screen. So you always have the plan view uh, right in front of you and the airplane will appear on it once you're in the approach area and a very easy way to cycle through the rest of the pertinent data. You can just use your controller down here and simply cycle through from the minimums to the briefing strip to the profile view while always having your situational awareness at its peak right there. We've got a flight path vector this little green circle here is actually a performance vector and it shows you the trajectory of the airplane. So you may have a positive um, pitch angle, but the airplane could be in a descent. And that flight path vector is going to show you where that is. So if you're flying into a new airport at night or an unfamiliar field and you're worried about landing short or too long, that flight path vector is going to show you exactly where that airplane uh, is headed towards. A question we get asked quite frequently is, well, how do the touch screens behave in turbulence? And there's really three ways that we make sure uh, it's a really fantastic experience for the user. First are these specialized be bezels around the screen. They're geared for you to be able to anchor your hands here. So then you have a steady position so then you can go ahead and touch the screen where you want to without jostling your hand around. The second is the display itself. We have what's known as a resistive touch screen. Most people are familiar with their Android or their iPhone where it has a capacitive touch screen. And what that really means is if you just barely touch the screen, something will happen. 
with the resistive touch screen, you have to deliberately touch the screen for something to engage. So that's another way in turbulence, if you're bouncing around, you don't accidentally touch something. You really have to go ahead and touch it there. And of course, the third uh, mitigation strategy is with the actual tactile buttons down here. You can do anything from the buttons here, including we have a joystick here, so you can move the cursor on the screen with, with the joystick alone there. Another thing I do want to point out, our multifunction uh, cursor panel here, you'll notice the keys are aligned in a QWERTY fashion. Everything you do in your life between your computer, your iPhone, your tablet, everything's QWERTY style. Why not your airplane? So this is just a very intuitive and natural way to interact with it. So that's probably the most common technical question we get, especially with the uh, relation to turbulence there. So one of the features uh, that I enjoy is the reroute feature. Oftentimes you'll have weather in front of you and you'll have to go around it. A lot of people take a, a heading bug to go around the weather. And the problem is, is that the FMS computer doesn't quite have an accurate calculation as to where your fuel is at that point with a lot of other systems. We take care of that by having a, a touchscreen reroute. So we tell the airplane, hey, we want to reroute. And I tell it exactly where I want to go. If the storm was right here, I say, you know what? I want to go here, I want to go here, here, and then back on course. And we go ahead and execute it. And now we've created an actual flight plan. The FMS calculates our performance, so we know how much we're going to weigh when we land, how much fuel we need to get there. And it's very easy to do, and it's hands off at this point. It really saves you a lot of time there. Another nice feature that I like is the ability to, to hold. If you want to enter a holding pattern, it's very simple. If we were told to hold over this point here, we just tap that, we press hold. We could enter all the parameters ATC gave us. If it was a charted hold, it would have the parameters fixed in. And I just hit execute. And there we go, now we have a holding pattern depicted. The airplane will enter in the proper teardrop parallel or direct entry, and off we go.